Hi everyone, it's Nancy with A Joyful Cottage. Thanks for joining me today. I want to apologize for the clicking noise you're hearing in this intro. Whenever it's windy outside, my bathroom ceiling fans like to make noise. I don't, I don't know why. I think it, there must be something in the mechanism that it gets caught by the wind and it just kind of serenades me with a little clicking noise. So that's what you're hearing. And I apologize for that. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm standing here in my bathroom where I've been working on the walls, texturing the walls, as I told you I was going to do. And that was a couple of days ago when I worked on that. I was off work and made some videos for you. And hopefully it'll be a helpful episode for you. So please stick around to the end. I have some things I want to share about, uh, about the channel and about you guys and what I appreciate about you and so on. So hope you'll join me for that. And with that, well, let's get going. So in mobile homes, especially older mobile homes like mine, there is what's called vinyl over gypsum. And that's what you see with that colored background that is actually vinyl and when you are trying to convert your wall into something more like a home and you're using joint compound like I am I'm doing a texture before you can do that you need to seal the vinyl over gypsum the VOG and that's what I'm doing this morning with this particular spot there was a mirror there that was glued on to the wall. It was a bear to take off, let me tell you. It, I don't ever wanna to have to do that again. I've got another bathroom that I'll be working on eventually where it's gonna be the same situation and I'm not looking forward to that. So just a forewarning that you may run into some issues like that if you're trying to take a bathroom mirror off the wall of a mobile home, an older mobile home. I don't know how they are in the newer ones, but in this one, that's definitely, this was built in 1995, so that gives you a little idea of how old it is. So I got that off and now I'm working on that wall. So what I'm going to do is use a product called Pro 999, and this is what it looks like. So it's Pro 999 RX 35. That's what I've used on the walls of my mobile home as I'm redoing them and making them look more like a standard house, a traditional home. So this is sealer and primer. So that's what I'll be using this morning. Just to be on the safe side, I did cover this sink area with plastic. like this product. I've used it, as I said, on all the walls that I've converted into more traditional walls in my home. A little goes a long way. I mean, I've had this can for I don't know how long. It's still, it's still good. I usually would use a roller to do this, but it's such a small area. I'm not going to get a roller out to do it. So just putting a layer on there. don't have to be precise with this. I mean, as far as putting it on, just make sure it gets on there. How you do it, you know, it's not, it's not critical. Just make sure you've got a layer on there to seal it. Well, I think one of the things that people hate most about mobile homes is the VLG, the over gypsum. But that you don't have to live with that. You know, you can you can make changes. And this is a really inexpensive change to make. And it has a lot of bang for the buck. So if you're thinking about a mobile home, an older mobile home, and you think you might want to do something like this, I hope that my sharing my experience with you will be helpful. I'm just going to get that covered. Again, just making sure it's covered. 
doesn't have to be fancy. Just get it on there. If you live in a mobile home and you've done something with your walls, I'd love to hear about it. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you've done. Maybe some people I know leave the batten strips in. Those are the strips that cover up the seams and in the gypsum. And some people leave them on and just paint over it, and that's fine too. It's a matter of taste, what you like. I prefer to remove them. They're not hard to remove, and they're not hard to cover up. I mean, if you remove it, it's not hard to cover up the, the gap that remains. That can be done with The drywall tape as I've mentioned before. I started this channel, I started documenting just recently so there's a lot of things that I've done that I don't unfortunately have videos on so I can't really share those with you. I'd love to. I wish I started making videos as soon as I moved in but I didn't so I'm just gonna have to do the best we can to talk about what I've done. I'll show you as many before photos as I can to talk about the processes I've used. So now I've pretty much got a coat on there. I don't want to take it all the way down to where I'm going to put a backsplash on. I'll probably paint that. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, so now we've got a coat of sealer on and we are good with that. So for texturing the walls, this is the product that I use. It's my USG, it's plus three joint compound. I'm putting some, some of the compound out. I'm putting it in my pan. Now, I will tell you that I've had this for a while. I've had this for about six months. So it's, not as soft as it was when I first got it. Now, people will tell you not to use this. You know, not that it won't store, and you'll have to replace it. But I find if I just add a little water to it, as long as it's still moist, not completely dried out, I can revive it enough to use it. And I like to do that so that I don't waste anything. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. I use a spray bottle so I can control it. And I'm going to mix that in. So I'm going to keep adding water and mixing it up until it has the consistency of a heavy pancake batter. Just keep adding water a little bit at a time, mixing it up till I have it the consistency I want. So what I'm doing here is just applying a, a layer of the joint compound and bringing it up to the top here and just smoothing it down. Now, I could smooth it straight. I could make it smooth. Just make a smooth covering. You don't have to put a texture in it. You just make sure that you've got it covered. I'm using a six inch knife here. Typically, people use a larger, trawl. So see that just is covering that whole wall. See how that's working? So you know you can you can do this and just do a nice smooth 
texture behind. So I've moved my camera around. I'm going to try to give you a closer up view of what I'm doing. So I'm laying on a coat of compound, dry compound. And to get that texture look, I'm just holding my knife at just a little bit of an angle here. See how it's just a little bit raised? And that lifts that compound up and gives it that texture look I'm going for. And I can do as much or as little as I want. So it's, you know, it's a personal preference. I'm bringing it up, up into the corner here. Again, I'm using a six inch knife. I like the control I get from it. This is not what I would say a quick, fast project, but it's not hard, it's not difficult. And you kind of get the hang of it as you're going, and uh, you'll see some things that you like, and you'll be happy with that, and you'll go back and... maybe add some other pieces of character, and that's what I like about this texture. It's, to me, it adds character. Again, it's not everybody's taste. Some people like a nice smooth wall, and you can certainly do that. But what I'm doing here, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get you a close up. Hopefully you can see what's happening here. It's just a little bit of skipping. It's basically what that is. And I will give some links in the description box of great YouTube videos that I've watched that are professionals. I am not a professional. I don't claim to be a professional. I'm sure if a professional watched this, it would be cringeworthy. <laughs> You know, because I am just mimicking what I what I see and trying to create what I like. So, you know, if you're happy with what you're doing, you may not satisfy a professional, but if you're happy, that's all that counts, right? Alright, so that, <clears throat> that is what I do to create the look I'm going for. Alright. So the joint compound has dried. This is a couple days later. And I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's dried. This is that area I was working on. Right here is that area I was working on in the last video where I showed you the process. Now I will be doing some sanding, some of these raised areas that you can see. I will be doing some sanding to kind of smooth that down a little bit. So I want it to look vintage and like it's been there for a while, but <clears throat> excuse me, I still want it to look, you know, I still want it to look nice. And so some of these raised areas, you really have to kind of sand them down a little bit. And there's some areas where I've completely skipped. You can see that. I like that. I like this look. It's not for everybody. I understand that. Some people look at this and think that it's terrible they wouldn't want them in their home that's fine you know it's like I said before it's my home and um, I like this this is the look I'm going for I like the vintage look of it 
I like the old world look of it and I'm happy with it. So that's all that counts. I got this whole wall done and above the shower. About almost to the end. About mm, three quarters of the way through. So now I've got to finish that up there and then I'll finish this wall. Now I want to tell you about this. This is what I was talking about before about covering up the gap where the batten strips were removed. So you cover it with, uh, the, with the drywall tape. You cover it with the drywall tape. That's what that is. And I'll put some links in the description box of really good, as I mentioned earlier, of really good um, professionals that have show how this sort of thing is done. So that's that. So I have the rest of this wall to finish. And then I'll caulk up around the trim. And then I'll be able to paint. And I will be painting over the texture with Big Chill by Sherwin Williams. I have a lot of that paint left from my kitchen. I use that color in my kitchen. And I've got a whole uh, pail left of that, so I'm going to use that. I'll show you uh, a little bit of my kitchen where you can see what the texture looks like with that with that paint. I will be taking it down a shade or two, I think, with some white paint just to give this a little bit lighter look. But yeah, so that's some progress on there. I should mention too, that if you wanted to, and people do this, they just go ahead and put that drywall tape over the gaps where the batten strips were. And then they come back and they uh, just kind of go over it and feather it so that it's smoothed into the wall. And then they don't put the joint compound over the whole wall. And then they just paint it. So you can do that. You can paint over the VOG. You don't have to put a, a joint compound over it. Uh, if you do that, though, you do have to seal it first. So a seal, it always has to be sealed before you paint. So you'd have to put a sealer primer on it like I did before you paint it. All right, so that's where we're at right now. Thanks. This is a wall in my kitchen, so this is how that texture looks after it's painted. And this is Big Chill, Sherwin-Williams. I hope you enjoyed the videos. <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit at the end of this video today and just chat with you. I I appreciate you so much. I have some things I, I want to tell you. When I started this channel, I really had no idea where it was going to go. I, I knew I wanted to share my home and my ideas, but I, more importantly, I wanted to share Jesus. And I wanted to be a representative for the Lord, which is a big responsibility and I take it seriously so I always want to glorify God in my videos if you're not a believer you might not understand that but the at the very least let me just tell you that this is my life this is how I live God is at the center of my life and I can't do a channel and leave him out I just can't do that so I hope that you'll join me. Um, I, I hope you'll come and be part of the community. However, I'm not, I don't plan on changing anything. What you have seen so far is pretty much what you're gonna see all the time. It's just my life, things I'm working on, things that I wanna share with you to encourage you and to inspire you. Uh, I think there's many people in the same boat that don't have a lot of money but still want to have a comfortable, safe, and uh, enjoyable home. So hopefully that's what you're going to get here. And then also for those that are longing for it, and I think there's many of us who do, 
that you'll come and join me for scripture reading and, and just a few words on that. So I wanted to start out by saying that. I want to tell you how amazed I am at you, <laughs> at all of you. The comments that you have left, the encouragement that you have given me has just been incredible. When I posted the video on my myself and my mobile home, that was, uh, I think, on the 3rd of March, I had about 500 viewers at the time. I just started my channel right after Christmas. I had about 500 viewers. Today, I have about 3,500, I think is what I looked, looked at this morning, pretty close to that. That's an amazing... That's an amazing thing, I think. For me, it is. And I know that it's the Lord. It's just God doing it. So I'm following him, and we'll see where it goes. As a friend of mine said to me this week, I think maybe the hardest part you're going to have is picking your lane. <laughs> and I think that's true because I have a lot of interests. But always, always, I want the mo most and foremost thing to be the Lord. Jesus. And um, so I wanted to share that those thoughts with you. I also want to encourage you to encourage one another. And I see that. I, I've seen some of you leave little notes on other, other replies that encourage one another. So I just want to take a moment to share a scripture that, that's on my mind that has to do with this. It's from Romans 15. It's, it's Paul writing to the Romans. <clears throat> Excuse me to the Roman church, just giving, basically it's just how to live life as a Christian. And we have a responsibility as disciples of Jesus Christ to live a life that's different from what we see around us. The world is uh, becoming increasingly evil and we need to have hope and courage to walk in this world, especially right now. So I want to just share a scripture with you. This is Romans 15, starting with verse 5. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another in, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Isn't that, isn't that great? I mean, that right there is what we need to be doing. That's what we need to be doing with each other. And I really hope that you feel welcome when you come here. Somebody made a comment that coming into my home was like sitting down with a good friend over a cup of tea. And well, that's exactly what I want it to be like here. It just, this is just, this is just me being me. <laughs> I don't know how to be anything else. and. I will say that I thought twice about starting the channel because I look at all the um, professional, I guess, or really successful YouTubers out there that seem to have a lot of vibrant personality and they're young and and they're cool and, and I'm none of those things and that's okay. That's, I am who I am. So I hope that I haven't talked too much today. I hope that you'll get something out of what I've shared and that you'll come back and continue to um, encourage one another with, with your words. I just, I just am so grateful for you. I am just so, so grateful for you and your encouragement that you have encouraged me. You have encouraged me. And I'm excited. I'm really excited to see what comes next. So, all right, enough of that, right? Stop talking. Let these people go. <laughs> all right. Love you guys. I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. God bless you.